All right, all right, guys. Good morning, good morning. What's up, Two Way? What's up, Sean? Yeah, it's Friday, brother. It's Friday, man. Uh, we should have Mitch today with his first stream from uh, Colorado. And so Mitch should be here today from Colorado. He just moved yesterday. So we should have him today sometime. What's up, Netron? Good morning, man. Bonjour. Yeah. But yeah, man, kind of a crazy day yesterday, honestly. We had the spy. Just uh, have a huge move up here. And like, if you look at the daily chart, you'll see kind of how significant the last few weeks have been. You know, we had this little mini crash in uh, early December. And uh, we've rebounded and retraced that entire kind of washout there. Moved up from 233.76 up to uh, 270. Where we're sitting now, we're at 270 now. So we've essentially retraced that. And we'll see if the market continues to head back up. I mean, who knows what it's going to do here. But uh, we also had a pretty big move for AMD yesterday. Big up move. Uh, about break even, although it did get a late spike just now. It's technically gapping up some for AMD. We had a SYMC. That's gapping up from 2102 to 2215. We have CRON, which had a nice red day or a nice green day yesterday. It's moving up some as well. GOOS, gapping up some. CGC, gapping up some. Uh, XOM, gapping up some. Um, we had YUMC, gapping up. And yeah, we have uh, TTNP for this really nice gap up here. GERN is gapping up some, although it looks like a looks like the volume's a little low still. Maybe the float's big on this one. D E A D E C K G O G L S B G L gapping up some. What's up, Arians World? Good morning, man. We have BRX, PYX. HON, CVX. We have uh, SCYX, which actually filled this entire gap back down. Uh, not the entire gap, actually. It's still um, a few sits away from that. But it filled most of this gap down for SYMC. Uh, yesterday, we also had FBIO, which filled most of the gap. But it's still, I mean, it's only at $2. It actually didn't fill that much. Uh, we had GE that went crazy yesterday. Look at this big move on GE. So a huge move there. Still up a decent amount. And like I said, we got a cron, some of the cannabis plays that look interesting. CGC. Look at the gap downs, VEDL, LPTX, CORT. UGAZ, which I believe is a uh, natural gas ETF. Amazon down a ton today TRVN CVS LMFA CVS is down Nokia down 
OPK kind of fighting back some here. I'll have to look up the news in a minute. What's up, Scott? Good morning, man. Yeah, we are officially over with uh, January, first day of February this year. Oh, we finally broke 10,000 subscribers. Thanks for the sub, Donna. Welcome, appreciate it. TTNP, you can see this big gap up here, two ways reporting that they had a positive initial results of Pubifin, which is a relaunch. The float is only 9.5 million, so a very small float for TTNP. Um, so good results for this bio stock, it sounds like. And uh, gapping up a significant amount here from uh, 123 up to 222. It's almost exactly a dollar, about uh, 98 cents right now. So really huge gap up, big percentage move, a lot of volume too. And so this one might be interesting to see if it fills the gap some. A lot of times these stocks will. If you look at FBIO and um, SY, what was it, SCYX. Yeah, SCYX filled the whole gap too, most of it at least. What's up, uh, James? Good morning, man. EARS. Yeah, EARS, cheaper penny stock. It's gapping up about uh, five cents or so from uh, 42 to 47. Volume's honestly pretty low though for a penny stock. Um, a lot of times these are going to have higher volume than you know even the more expensive ones just because they're so cheap. People can buy more shares of them, and so the volume's actually pretty low for this one still for EARS. But they are doing a full repayment of the Hercules loan facility apparently with a twenty-three million dollar float or twenty-three million share float. Sorry, uh, small float as well. That's rough, Mike. Yeah, I noticed Amazon was getting hit this morning, man. Amazon really tanking this morning, so kind of a crazy move there. Not your move. I don't think your move was crazy, but man, Amazon getting hit this morning. Gapping down from 1718 to 1642, so pretty big gap down here. For Amazon, at least. We'll have to look up what's going on with it. MNGA. Yeah, this is almost... Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a uh, 10 to 1 split. Or maybe larger than that. I don't know. Let's see where this was. This was at 28 cents. And so it's going to be like 10, 15 to 1, it sounds like. I'll have to look that one up as well, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be a split of some type. Uh, yeah, it's 21 reverse split. Okay, appreciate that uh, two-way. Yeah, I knew it was something like that. Very rarely will a stock gap up that much with it out, without it being a split of some type. <sighs> All right, let's look up why Amazon's down. I'm guessing it's probably earnings, maybe. All right, so Amazon had strong earnings, but a bad outlook. 
So it had good earnings, it just had bad outlook. So Amazon did report fourth quarter and full year 2018 results after the close yesterday. It, it did beat the, you know, it's weird. It's like it beat the Wall Street expectations for uh, earnings. And it also beat the uh, expectation of revenue consensus. But shares are still down um, because they had the first quarter 2019 revenue guidance coming in that was lighter than Wall Street was expecting for it. And they also had some concerns about the company plans, which they did uh, let everybody know on uh, an earnings call yesterday. And so it actually had good earnings, good revenue, bad outlook for 2019. And so that is making some people get worried about it. I think it'll probably rebound, but who knows? I mean, it had good earnings and revenue. So we'll see. Who knows? Yeah, CGC's push it up sub. Looking strong. Uh, we can look at some other cannabis stocks here. Cron up some as well. ACB. Um, what else? We got APHA. Most of the cannabis plays are up some. Look at uh, APHA. Doesn't look bad here. APHA had a huge day yesterday. I didn't even notice this one. But a huge day yesterday for APHA. This one went up from about 775 all the way up to 875. So it went up about a dollar over 10%. So a big move there. Let's see what CODX eventually did. You said uh, XO, XOM. Yeah, XOM, ExxonMobil, spiking up some. We can look up the news on that. Earnings are expected to be released today for Exxon. All right, so Exxon put out positive, uh, better than expected uh, first fourth quarter profit. It beat the analyst estimates and made shares go up. Uh, the net income fell to six billion, or one forty-one a share, from eight thirty-eight billion a year ago, as margins weakened. Uh, analysts did have forecast of about a dollar and eighteen a share profit, excluding one-time items. It rose to just over four billion barrels per day, up from three point nine billion barrels per day in the same period of last year. It also uh, raised its output ninety percent over a year ago in the Permian Basin the largest US shale basin so better out uh, better um, better output good earnings better than expected and so Exxon Mobil spiking up some in pre-market this morning OPK yeah OPK completely rebounded here gap down to 269 is back up to 357 for OPK um, I mean, I don't really see much out on OPK. So OPK uh, Health is actually um, conducting phase two clinical trials that are evaluating the effectiveness of their bio drug. In reviewing the blinded data, it does. People did notice that it measured one of the study's primary endpoints.
So they did notice uh, increases in liver enzymes that were observed in several men at these higher doses. So they're planning on suspending the current trial to con but continue to analyze the data relating to the other primary endpoint. So it's kind of tricky to tell why OPK is doing what it's doing. Uh, AMD spiking up the, some though. Look at AMD move. What's up, who gets this? Uh, we'll see, Ariz. Who knows, man? But yeah, AMD just spiked up some. It's up to 24.56. We can look at the other microchip stocks. And uh, they're up some, kind of following what AMD's doing. We can look at NVIDIA as well. NVIDIA had a big green day yesterday. It is technically gapping up some, although basically break even. See what the overall market's doing here. And then if you like penny stocks, TTNP looks decent here. Buy is up slightly, very, very slightly, about 50 cents or so. Actually, it's not, I mean, it's a decent gap up, but it closed down here. And so it's about, you know, 46 cents, 46 cent gap up on the overall market. We'll see where it goes today. Like, most people saw a big green day from the market yesterday. It's kind of retraced any of these big crashes that we had in December. And so interesting to see where they go. Um, Cast asks, hey John, can you explain the ask and the bid you see in the charts? Um, I mean, the bid and ask and pre-market and, and stuff like that is just the closest buyer and seller that you have. And so sometimes the spread's going to be kind of rough on the SPY since it has so much volume. I mean, it's only a three cent spread, but like if you look at, let's find a good example. If you look at some other stocks, depending on what the volume's like, the spread's going to be much worse, and so it just depends. TBLT. Yeah, look at TBLT pop up here. Did just get a volume spike at 8.01, so just now... We'll see what uh, TBLT does here, but it did just spike here. You can see it's starting to move some. TBLT getting some volume in here, breaking the high of pre-market. It's up to 338 at the ask, testing the highs. All right, Mitch is going to the coffee shop. Uh, I mean, I don't know the closer the spread, the better to buy or sell. Um, I, I know that the better fill you're going to get, you know. I mean, it. the closer to the spread, I mean, the closer the spread, the better, the more supply and demand they have going on. But uh, it all just depends. Uh, GE starting to spike up here. GE starting to push some. It's testing that. Big kind of support resistance level at 1015, 1017 or so from yesterday. But it's at 1016 now. We'll see what it does here. It's about break even overnight now. It closed at 1016 and it's at 1016 now. So we'll see where that one goes. Also looking at Cron. Again, Amazon gapping down significantly here after a 
you know, they put out good earnings and revenue, bad 2019 outlook. Uh, we also, let's look at Apple. Apple is up slightly. I'm using the opening range breakout, opening range breakout Aries. That's what I've been using. Uh, it's actually worked. You know, it's kind of funny here. Like the first week I used the opening range breakout, it, it went terrible. I had uh, I had one out of five successful trades, so it literally failed four days in a row. It worked on Monday, the first week I traded it, and it failed Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, so it was kind of discouraging a little bit. And then, but the next week it worked every single day. And then this week, so far at least, it's worked three out of four days. And I've had three green days in a row using the opening range breakout. And so if you kind of tally all that up, it's failed. It's failed like five times, but it's worked like nine times or something like that. And so it actually has a decent accuracy rate since I started it. It just kind of, that first week just wasn't, didn't work out well for it. But the following weeks did. Uh, GE pushing up some here. It's at 1019 now. GE. Yeah, I just drink my coffee uh, black. No cream, no sugar. Just a little bit of milk to cool it down is how I drink my coffee. I like the bitterness. The bitterness mm -hmm. wakes me up. AMD continuing to push here. How do I feel about the gap reversal strategy? Uh, it could work. I mean, it could work, you know. We'll see. I mean, appreciate the sub, Joseph. Welcome, man. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it could work. I mean, uh, I back-tested the gap fail strategy on it and um, had mixed results. When I back tested it, though, it had pretty good results. And the key thing here is that, like, you just want to wait for it to break the low, for instance. Like, on days, the good thing about it is on, like, days when it doesn't break the low. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, so this would have been one and a nice little fail here on the downside. So, yeah, I mean, the opening range breakdown, gap fail, uh, it's been shown to work, but it just depends on how you approach it. What's up, Jason? CGC. Yeah, man, CGC is moving up some here. We'll see where this one goes as well. CGC actually had a nice fade yesterday. But uh, some of the other cannabis plays don't look bad, like Cron, APHA heading up. Look at APHA gapping up from 874 to 915 or so. Doesn't look terrible. XOM, Exxon Mobil gapping up some after uh, good earnings and revenue, I believe. Um, what else do we have? TBLT still moving up here. Like I mentioned, TBLT starting to spike here. It's up to 336. Picking up some volume. Doesn't look terrible. Uh, I mean, it all depends. Uh, Aries. Lately, I think it's actually been working better on the upside for the opening range breakout. You know, uh, at least with the market rallying like it's been doing, you know, like you can see the opening range breakout on the upside has been working fairly well for AMD. Definitely better, at least for me, than on the downside. The downside hasn't been working as well, but on the upside, it's been, you know, pretty consistent. The most I've ever profited, a few hundred bucks. But yeah, TTNP, we'll see what happens here. Like most of the big gappers that we had yesterday, like FBIO ended up kind of washing out. What was the other one? SYMX, 
SCMX, SCYX. Yeah, that was it, SCYX. But yeah, this one had a really nice gap fail strategy, broke onto that major support at uh, about 130, and then held that area as resistance for the rest of the day, fading off the VWAP a few times as well. So some of these big gappers failed. We'll see what uh, TTNP ends up doing here. And uh, TBLT, I'm sure they're probably in the same sector just by how their name sounds. No, maybe not. TBLT sounds like a construction stock. Here, we'll look up TBLT, see why uh, TBLT is starting to spike up like it's doing right now. Uh, yeah, so it's a tools and building company, and it launched its product sales within Minard's Incorporated Home Improvement Store. So nice little uh, spike here from that deal with Minard's. Yeah, that's what it is, Daniel. Uh, it's put out a statement that said they will supply tools and home building accessories under both the tough built brand and private label. They are now, uh, he said, quote, we are now supplying this retailer with over 75 different SKUs, stock keeping units, which we expect to expand over time, Panosian said. In the short time since our launch, the feedback from our partner and consumer response has been extremely positive. So that's the release that came out for TBLT, and it is showing it in pre-market. It's gapping up some from 243 to 333, so about 90 cents. Um, big percentage gap up for sure. It looks to be about 30, 35%, so a decent gap up here for TBLT. TBLT has a history of spiking and not holding it. Yeah, spike fail, spike fail. It's a relatively new stock, though. I mean, it's only, what, IPO'd in December, yeah? And so it's still a pretty new stock. We'll see. We also have SYMC gapping up some here. SYMC. What's up, Ice Cold? Good morning, man. All right, so SYMC beat earnings estimates, and the CFO is going to be stepping down, apparently. It's an antivirus software maker. So it beat profit and revenue estimates for December quarter, and it also is raising gui guidance on strong enterprise and consumer businesses. It also was stated that its chief financial officer, its, C, its uh, CFO, Nicholas Nivello, or Nivello, will be stepping down to pursue other opportunities following a slew of key executive exits since last year. So they're switching it up, kind of rocking things around a little bit within their company, and their CFO is stepping down. I guess I guess that's uh, giving people hope in this stock because it's gapping up some from 2102 to 2254. So we'll see where that one goes as well. Cron up. Spiking up some here. See, yeah, I feel you, Keith. I feel you, brother. Yeah, TTNP up top. Uh, we already looked this one up. I think this one had... Uh, let me... I can't remember what TTNP was positive data if I remember correctly right two way I think it was positive data right or uh, Titan pharmaceuticals is what TTNP is it's the top one so 
So this company is actually doing a relaunch of probrophine implant, which is a treatment for opiate use disorder. The total shipments for that biodrug between mid-June and the rest of the year rose by 20% sequentially based on prelim information. It also expects more details in its quarter four full year, full year 2018 results, which are going to be released in March. It's also seen about half a mil shares traded between the opening bell. And so that's good news for TTMP. We'll see where this one goes as well. Uh, you can also see GE spiking up here at the 1024. It's making a move in pre-market. What's the overall market doing? Spiking up a little bit. Maybe that's what some of these stocks are following here. CGC up some as well. AMD up some, spiking up some as well. So AMD, another big gap up here. We'll see what happens. Both of these have been pretty strong lately. <laughs> I'll pass on that, Ariz. I'll pass on that, brother. <laughs> Not going to go YOLO on it. Uh, a reverse split means a, uh, a reduction in the number of shares. Uh, it makes the value or earnings per share increase. And uh, a regular split is vice versa. It's adding shares. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. for everybody wondering why Isaac just referred to himself as Brady, uh, we made a little joke here that if I, if, uh, if the Patriots win the Super Bowl, Brady has to change, or Isaac, I'm sorry, Isaac has to change his name, and we have to only refer to him as Brady for a week. And if the Rams win, what did they call me? They can call me Patrick for a week. And I can only respond to Patrick for a week. So, yeah, that's what Isaac's talking about here. <laughs> What's up, Eric? Good morning, man. Yeah, AMD's up. We'll see what happens here with this one this morning. Really curious to see where it's going to go. It's been a pretty strong few days for AMD. I mean, really since the 30th, this thing has moved up, let's see, from 19 all the way to 24.75, almost 25. So just about uh, $5.75 in gains for AMD in the last uh, three days. So big move for it. We'll see what we get with following it. Who am I going for, Rams or Pats? Uh, yeah, I, I think the Pats are probably going to win. And so probably the Pats, yeah. I mean, I, I just can't feel good about myself if I root for the Rams after we were robbed, you know, so. Saints did get messed. They got robbed, man. Uh, MU, um, a lot of GE, MU, Cron, CGC. Uh, we got a bunch of stocks. XOM, ACB, APHA. Yeah, but there wouldn't have been any overtime, Isaac, if uh, the ref would have called. See, this is how you know it's they're super dirty over there, man. This is how you know, right? One of the refs was going to call the call the uh, pass interference. One of the refs was going to call it, and the other ref like waved him down and like got super mad about it. And so that's how you know 
they probably figured that the NFL in general can make more money if the Rams went to the Super Bowl as opposed to the Saints, and so that's probably what happened. But do I think they should reverse it and replay the game? No, that's crazy. I just They might as well just continue. I don't, I don't think that they would ever reverse the game and replay the game. I think that's silly. I don't think they should do that. Um, and I seriously doubt they ever will. TTNP. Yeah, TTNP doesn't look bad. TBLT spike it up some as well. TBLT starting to form a gap here. Gapping up from 243 to 316. So T TBLT is another one to watch. Uh, OCX. Let's look at that one. OCX, small gap, low volume. We'll see where that one goes as well. OPK. Kind of filled the entire gap already. Curious to see where that one goes as well. Yeah, those are probably the two best ones. Yeah, for sure. Like Two Way said, guys, today is Friday. Volume can and probably will be a little bit light today. And so understand that. Remember that. Yeah, GE pulling back up here. GE's had a pretty bad few weeks or a few months too um, before the end of December where it's been pushing up steadily here. Got all the way down to $6.66. Maybe that's a bad sign for GE. <laughs> TRVN, low volume. Looks like a big float. CCCL, low volume as well. All right, guys, we got about 10 minutes. We should get Mitch here soon. I know Mitch was walking to the uh, coffee shop to uh, be here. So we should get Mitch here soon. Let's see when he said that. About 20 minutes ago. So we should get here soon. But yeah, guys, we broke 10,000 subscribers yesterday. How cool is that, man? We started last year off at uh, about 3,000, if I remember correctly. So we, we've gained um, over 300%. Or no, over 200%. But still. Amazon, yeah, man. Amazon's down. It actually had good earnings. Amazon's down because it had bad, uh, a bad 2019 outlook that it put out. But it actually had good earnings and revenue, I believe. But, uh, you know, if Amazon's not perfect, people are going to start, you know, selling their positions on it. So I guess it's to be expected. C-R-O-N. Got to watch the cannabis plays. They've been a little volatile the last few days here as well. Yeah, weak guidance, Pat. How much do I make now? Uh, I make, I do all right. A-D-I-L. What was it? T-D. I don't know. T-B-L-T. Yeah, we'll see where TBLT goes. I'll watch this one too. NIO was also a pretty big move yesterday, and it actually held most of its gains for NIO. Uh, it looks like a little bit higher float stock. I'll have to look up what the float is on NIO, but it actually held most of its gains here. It's sitting at 785, so we'll see where NIO goes as well. If it breaks under 780 or so, 775, it may start to wash out some, but it held most of its gains, so we'll see. GOOS. Another one to look. <laughs> Mike. We got G-O-O-S here as well.
What's up, bro? Yo, what's up, bro? What's up? Um, I'm not in the best location because I got like music playing and stuff, but I gotta do what I got. <laughs> yeah, no stress, man. I'll mute myself for most of the time. Okay. I'll just like unmute when I want to talk. All right. All right, guys, we got Mitch here. What's going on, guys? Here from Denver, Denver, Colorado. Enjoying it. Nice, uh, t like 25 degrees outside. <laughs> Cold up there, huh? <laughs> yeah, man, not too bad. I mean, I'm, I, you know, as long as you use, you know, the, the layers, right. it'll be all right. Yeah. It's not too bad. All right. I think, you know, what really kills you is the wind. If there's like 20 mile an hour wind and then it's 35 on top of that. That's yeah. what really kills people. Yeah, when I was in Chicago, that's the biggest thing I noticed was the wind, man. The wind was serious, oh, you bro. You can't handle it in Chicago. Chicago don't play. Yeah, Chicago, the windy city, they're not lying, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that place, I, I remember I went there. I used to travel, like, in between, uh, like, uh, I would go from Louisiana up to Sault Ste. Marie, Canada, and I would take a Greyhound there when I was, like, 18, uh, and I would ride a Greyhound by myself from, like, Louisiana to Canada to go visit my mom when she lived up in Canada and when I'd stop in Chicago man that wind would just go right through any clothes I had man it was super cold man the the windy city is not a lie you know TMSR two wave TMSR yeah, it's starting to move some. All right, guys, we got a little bit less than five minutes. A little bit less than five minutes, so let's do this. Good luck, everybody. All right, so what's your top watch, man? What are you, what are you doing? Uh, you still doing that lovely AMD life? How was it? Hey, man, the AMD going? life's been good lately, bro. Uh, I was oh, telling shit. people earlier, man, the AMD life. I mean, AMD has worked with the opening range breakout three out of four days this week. Last week, it worked every day. And so, I mean, that first week was rough, but since then, it's definitely uh, compensated for it. It's worked uh, about nine times and failed about five, so it still has a positive accuracy rate. Uh, at least in the three weeks or so, two and a half weeks, three weeks I've been trading it. So we'll see how today brings, but I mean, it's been working. I'm just going to stick with it. Uh, TBLT. TBLT had a new product launch for a new company. Um, Maynard's, I believe, was the company, if I remember correctly, but it had a new product launch. So let's do this, guys. We got four minutes. I'll pull up the other scanners here. Get ready in a minute. But yeah, we got TBLT, TT, NP, AMD, GE, uh, NIO, CGC, Cannabis Plays are moving, XOM, ExxonMobil, uh, we have uh, GOOS, and so we got some movement. Let's do it though, guys. All right, guys, we got about three minutes. Yeah, we'll see if it works today. I mean, all I can do is stick to the strategy and uh, hope it works out like it's been doing. But uh, so far, so good with it this week. Cron, yeah, cannabis plays are moving some for sure. XSXTC. Yeah, 740 looks reasonable too. TBLT spiking. All right, guys, we got about two minutes. Let's do it. Let me uh, pull these down, get everything all squared away here. There we go.
All right. All right, guys, we got about a minute left, so good luck, everybody. EGO pop it up with the skater here. EGO actually moving up some. This one had a big move yesterday as well. Finally broke that pre-market high. I was watching that level for a while. Finally broke it up here, up to 389. Tested four once. ONTX had a nice move. AVP had a huge move yesterday. PYDS moved. So we got about 40 seconds, guys. So good luck, everybody. Let's do it. GE. All right. So the SPY is up technically, although it's about break even. We'll see where the SPY goes today. CGC starting to spike up a little bit here. It's up to 49.60, so CGC starting to spike up. Look at CGC move here. We got 10 seconds, guys, so good luck. But yeah, CGC starting to test the highs of pre-market right now. Just broke it a little bit here. Here's the bell coming up. We're at uh, 8.30 now, so good luck, guys. There's the bell. Let's do it. All right, TTNP popping up on the scanner really quick. Spy dropping some, it's down to 269s. Popped back up. We'll see what the spy does here. AMD dropping along with it. CGC spiking here, guys. CGC spiking up nicely here. It's up to 49.79, so CGC spiking up nice here. I'm sure the other cannabis plays like CRON are doing the same. You can see CRON spiking here. We probably got APHA. It's down some, but, which is surprising. Overall, we got the SPY dropping some. Trying to hold over that 270 level, bouncing a little bit. AMD bouncing with it. But yeah, CGC, big move up. TBLT getting rejected out the gate. Yeah, look at TBLT drop here. Amazon dropping some as well. Cron dropping now. So CGC is kind of going against everything, but Cron just broke the lows here. Under 2020. AMD's kind of following suit here. Spy pushing up now though. Spy broke the high. It's at 270s. AMD dropping. NIO's up. Yeah, NIO's pushing up. AMD dropping. It's not looking bad. NIO's still pushing here. Exxon's pushing up. CGC. We'll see if CGC finds some support here. But so far, so it's green on the day. We'll see if it holds. NIO still pushing here up to 790s. AMD bouncing back some. LPTX popping up on the scanners. First low float stock popping up on the scanners. LPTX. Uh, not the best volume. But NIO pushing. SPY dropping. And so we might see a drop in AMD now. The SPY actually just washed. Big wash too. So, I mean, it's up so much already, it's not surprising to see it wash. TTNP on the scanners. Spiking back up here. But yeah, SPY dropping. Maybe he's going to make AMD drop. CGC actually dropped. It's actually red on the day now. Dropping significantly here. YUMC pushing up. YUMC pushing up some. But AMD trying to drop back down. SPY dropping. CGC dropping. A lot of red today from what I see. A lot of red. 
Most stuff is red today. SXTC jump. SXTC popping, apparently. But yeah, most of the stuff I'm looking at is red right now. Yeah, SXTC is spiking up here. It's at 740. All right, so let's look at the range here thus far here. We got 70. So far, it's about a 50 cent range or so. About a 50 cent range. MBOT push it up again. Uh, this is Thinkorswim for charts, trade net and TEFs for the broker, and trade ideas for the scanner. Uh, yeah, MBOT is spiking up some here. All right, so here's the time I got to start getting ready with AMD. All right, so All right. there it goes. There's like, it seems to be a reversal there. Looks like everything's starting to come back up. We got the range here. Yeah, now I'm seeing that curl back up. Yeah, I'm seeing it on the spy. <laughs> NIO with a push there, almost to the eights now. Yeah, Cron back up some. So is CGC, so they reversed. Look at Exxon Mobil drop, though, guys. Look at Exxon Mobil's drop here. That's a huge drop for Exxon. Um, down to 7440s, just dropped about 60 cents or so in 30 seconds. So big drop for Exxon Mobil. Yeah, ACB getting some good momentum there, too. AMD starting to push up on the upside now. Uh, Mitch is at Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry about the music, guys. I'll be trying to be in and out so I don't mess up too much with the, with the stream. Oh, you're good, bro. All right, AMD getting ready to break this high here. Tested it once. Probably about to jump in, depending on how it acts here, see if it breaks this high. It's right around 72. Tested it again. Spy pulling back some here. Pulling back up now. Still in this range for AMD. All right, so AMD is still kind of in this range here. It hasn't really broken it. And so we'll give it some time here. But uh, I think when it finally does break the range, it'll be better for me. It just depends on when. I've been, I've been order out on AMRN at 1750. But I think I might have dismissed the down move there. I'm looking for a bounce here to get in. I made a nice down move there. All right, so like I said, waiting for AMD to break the high of this range. It's testing it now. It's got a break, though. It's definitely still in this range, pulling back some. Spy pushed back underneath the VWAP here. Still hasn't picked a direction. Spy may come back down here. All right, I'm in AMD. Just broke the high of that range. Don't know how I feel about it, though, because the SPY is actually pulling back down here, but it broke the range. Now 
May have just faked me out. We'll see. Spy dropping some. See if it holds support here now and moves up. There's a spike up, a little bit better now. It's trying, but. Up to 75, 77. All right, so the big thing is to look to see if it holds support where that previous high was at 72 or so is what we want to see with AMD. There's 80s. All right, so the profit target, looking at this one, the profit target would be, let's see, from 70 up to about 25, 20 or so is what we really want to look, really want to see. About 25.20. Oh, the SPY rebounded. Okay, I didn't even notice that. I was too busy watching this one. So that's usually good for this, the SPY moving up like it is. All right, looking to get in an AMRN here. AMRN here. Oof, didn't get my fill. I had an order out there for 52s. It went right to it. Should have got filled. Surprised they didn't get filled. Would have been a great, great, great trade right there. Great start of it. Don't stress it, man. I, yeah, I had to cancel the order. I'm on my laptop, so it's a little bit harder. Got to be smarter. Yeah, I don't want to be uh, caught into a, a push right here. I'll let it push back into the 50s. If it does, I'll short it. Sounds like a plan. All right, so like I said, with AMD, we want to see it hold support at that previous high at around 72, at about 24.72. It's testing it now. We'll see if it holds. But may get a choppy day with the SPY or with the uh, with AMD if it can't hold that level. The SPY is pushing up some, but AMD continues to kind of test here. If it breaks underneath this, it's going to look much weaker, which it is now. Even though the spy is pushing up some. Spy push it up there. We'll see what we get. And be fighting back a little bit here. Seventy-seven, seventy-eight, seventy nines, eighties. See if we can hold. Seems to be fighting that eighty cent level. Spy pulling back some. All right, guys, I'm short there. On which one? Short AMR. There. AMR. Yeah. Exactly. Good luck. Exxon Mobil had a nice fade, believe it or not. Wrist is 58 right now. Okay. We go good first move there. All right, going to take 200 off there. 200 off at 40. Nice drop there, brother. Looks good for you, man. Good job. Yeah, I got a 51 entry here. 200 shares left. Already captured 24. Going to let next profit is going to be at 30 and below. Okay. Nothing like a little coffee shop trading, man. Yeah. <laughs> if it works, it works, bro. It's just real simple now. Yep. I can hold to that last high of that candle. I don't even need to hold to my risk anymore. I can hold right there to 54s. 
can risk three cents of the rest of this and try to see if this can work here. Yeah, AMD dropping quick here. Hopefully it rebounds, but I'm just going to stick to my plan, which is a reasonable plan. Uh, risk is about $60, $70 on it. But it just depends. It's up so much in the last few days. Maybe a little extended on the upside, but I'll hold to my plan. Curling back down here for AMD. I'm looking too good to lose money today, brother. <laughs> hey, man, I hope it works out. Looks good for you, man. Where, where was your entry on it? Uh, 51. 51? Yeah, good entry. Yeah, I wanted 52, but I just slammed on 51s. I think you to good. 30s. All right, guys. Pull 100 shares off here. Somewhere in between here, right here at 33, I'm taking off 100 shares here, guys. I only have 100 shares left. Going to let these go break even on the rest. Let the rest go break even. Already have $42 on the day. Good job, brother. Yeah, it's uh, he's at Starbucks right now. He's coffee shop trading. He just coffee moved. Coffee shop trading, brother. Yeah. Well, I, I just secured the apartment and stuff. I have an interview later. I'll be moving later on this month, but I had to come and secure everything, you know? Yeah, no stress, man. Do what you got to do, brother. Hey, got to, got to. Big things this year, man. Big yeah, things. Definitely. All right, AMD testing that uh, VWAP level. I don't know if it's going to hold. It may be a VWAP projection here, but like I said, just going to stick to my levels here. Uh, the uh, the opening range breakout such a black and white trade that you just got to stick to your levels and follow your levels. Honestly, right, though, if I'm being things, objective, I would probably see it as a short at this point. But no. One of the things of, uh, I think, coffee shop trading is uh, you want to make sure that uh, you don't want to get squeezed too fast. A lot of times you're not going to be as fast reacting. So um, since I already have a good amount of profit, I've put a stop on this trade. So if it does go past my limit, I'll just get out of the trade. But if it keeps working, I'll be able to secure this profit. Yeah, makes sense. Don't use stops often, but I think they're really um, good if you are in a point where you can't be worried about speed. Yeah. And if you can't worry about speed, then give yourself an ability to get out um, kind of not um, by yourself, but mechanically. Right. I mean, especially if you got to worry about your internet and stuff like that, it makes more sense. Yeah, definitely. All right, like I said, my risk is 24.20 in this trade, 24.20. And so we still have a little bit to go, but I'm just going to let it hold at those levels. Looking weaker as time goes on for AMD, though, which is somewhat to be expected. I mean, with all the green days it's had lately, it's bound to pull back some eventually. And uh, I think that's what I'm getting caught in with AMD. Still a green week thus far. <laughs> Starbucks trading equals seventeen dollar profit minus twenty one fifty coffee equals negative four fifty. <laughs> Not good for me. Yeah, I mean, hey, it all depends on how you judge it. It depends. Uh, I mean, hey, got to have some coffee. Got to pay your dues, right? Commissions. Right. All right, AMD pulling back here, maybe testing these lows. I'm here at the, the, the low of the day for me here at 32s. Yeah, it looks good. Just cracked it. Nice little rejection on AMD, even though I'm in the opposing direction. I can still kind of see the rejection, though, on the one-minute chart for AMD. All 
And Spy rebounding looks strong here, but now it's kind of looking weaker. MNGA if possible. All right, Tech, I'll look at MNGA. Uh, it was a reverse split, so you got to be careful with it. Um, and now it's just washing out some. It's just looking weak. But it was a reverse split, and so I mean, tough to trade for me. I don't usually I don't usually approach reverse splits. Yeah, what was it? A twenty to one reverse split two way for MNGA? That's what happened. It was a twenty to one reverse split. Yeah, we might gotta turn that down a little bit, bro. No, I got you. I'll just mute myself for a second. My bad. I've been muting in the in and out. You're just good. Trying to take profit here. Uh, a reverse split is when they uh, reduce the number of shares available to the public. It's when they reduce the number of shares available to the public. That's a reverse split. All right, getting pretty close to my stop limit here. About to test it now. Got to be careful and ready to exit. See if we get a bounce here. If not, getting ready to exit. Pretty close to my risk. All right, guys, we didn't crack the low of the day here, so got to consider taking either profits right here or look for a 1720 break. All right, we got a little bit of a bounce at the low of the day for AMD. Seems pretty choppy right now. There's some downward pressure right there on AMRN, and maybe look to take profit here as a move. Either should break 1720 or bounce back up to VWEB. All right, guys, took profit there at 27. Took profit there at 27, $65 trade. Not bad. Nice job, brother. Good work, man. Yeah, 400 shares, $65. I'll take it. Yeah, man. Not bad for your first day back, brother. Good job. Yep. All right, AMD bouncing at the lows here. Spy looking weak. We get another wash here. I'll probably end up getting out AMD soon. It's tested that low once and confirmed that risk level, and so it's actually easier for me to follow in the trade. But if we get a significant move back down for a test, I'm going to get out before the break. Um, trying to stick to my risk as closely as I can with it. But uh, yeah, I don't want to see another move back down to test these lows. Breaking back down, like I said, gonna hold it pretty tight underneath here. Back up to 36.
Spiking back up to 40s. Could be a VWAP rejection though, so gotta watch for that, but bouncing back some, looking a little bit better. We'll see how it acts at the half dollar at 24.50. I think it's the big level to watch for at 24.50. It's the half dollar level. Maybe have some support and resistance there. You get a bounce back up in the SPY. And so it's actually following the SPY a decent amount with AMD, following the SPY reasonably well. So we'll watch the SPY along with it. Bouncing the SPY, we're getting a bounce in AMD, so we'll watch it, but got to be careful with it. <laughs> laughing at what Isaac said or should I say Brady alright pull back down here on AMD Broke underneath it. Don't want to see a crack of the lows here. It's going to test it again, it looks like. Here it goes. Got to be pretty tight with it, like I said, if it gets back down here. Looking weak. All right, I'm back. I got a little bit away from some of the, the noise, so it should be a little better. <laughs> Welcome back, bro. Yeah, I'm seeing AMRN hang down at the bottom. It might crack the lows, but I was expecting a bounce back to 1740s. Didn't want to hold all the way up there. I'm probably about to get out of uh, AMD here. All right, I'm out. All right, $93 loss, just about what I expected for my risk. Um, today was just one of the days it didn't work out. And so I definitely don't want to hold it through this low of the day break here. Uh, that's a little bit too risky for me, uh, holding it through these lows. And so I followed the plan. It didn't work out today. That's kind of how it goes sometimes. But um, yeah, it's still a green week overall. I've had three green days and two red this week, so not a bad week. I just got to continue with the strategy here. But uh, AMRN is looking pretty good for you, man. Let's see if it actually breaks that 1720. You said your entry was 1751? Yes, 1751 was my entry. There you go, man. Look at that break. Here, let me pull you up if you're uh, up right now. Oh, no, you're on Skype. Uh, no, I'm, not. I'm on the Skype life. I'm on the Skype life, bro. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, hey, looks like I should have maybe held that last 100. I took the 100 off at 27. Which oh, you're out of it? Day. Yeah, I took the 100 off there at 27. Um, I was expecting a bounce back to 40s, and then I could have looked to re-add size there. But not too bad of a move there. I got at the, uh, the low of the day there at 17.26. Maybe could have... Uh, targeted that wick but I was expecting a bounce there oh uh, so you're out of your full position yeah out of the full position I, I had a hundred shares left and I took uh, sixty five dollars off got out at seventeen twenty seven uh, no, no stress. Uh, yes, it. I mean, it was a red day. Um, it's like I always try to say, though, like really with this strategy, it's so black and white that you just kind of got to take it and take the red days along with the green. And so, like I said, this week we had a uh, three successful instances and two fails. And so it actually worked more than it didn't this week. But today was one of the red days where it didn't work. Um, looking back on the week, though, one thing I have to do is I have to make sure I get my full one-to-one -one reward target from it whenever it actually does work. Because that's going to compensate for the losses. Because like what I've been doing is I've been taking profits a little bit early 
And so my wins aren't as big as my losses. And so I do need to fix that whole next week. But it's still early. It's still kind of, uh, you know, whenever you're trying a new strategy out, you got to kind of tweak it a little bit, learn what works and what doesn't to give you the best odds. And so we're still in that kind of phase here. But again, like I said, just to review the last three weeks of trading this strategy, uh, it has worked. Last week, it worked every day. This week, it worked three out of five days. And so uh, it has worked most of the time. First week, it failed four times and then failed two times this week. So it's failed six times and it has worked nine times. And so, um, so yeah, so, you know, overall, it's still a, uh, it's still been working fairly well, but it's just something that I got to continue moving forward with it and uh, just allow that positive accuracy rate to accumulate over time. You know, one thing I learned after that first week is that I can't let the little small time swings affect me. And I think it's kind of human nature where people see me have a red day and they want to say, oh, well, you must have done this and this and this wrong. When really it's just you get a random distribution of wins and losses and you just got to take the red along with the green sometimes. And so that's kind of where I'm at now. I definitely have a few things I need to tweak on when uh, implementing this strategy. But uh, overall, it's still been positive accuracy rate over the last three weeks. But yeah, like I said, I really want to get my losses up to at least the same level as my wins. And I think the way I accomplish that is actually having to have the patience to wait for that full one-to-one -one reward target when it does work. And so that's kind of the notes I have this week on the strategy. And we'll see how next week goes. But overall, it was a good week. It was still a green week overall. And so, uh, like I said, next week, we got to implement those changes and really focus on getting that one-to-one -one target when it does work. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's all like, like I always say, like some people get on here and, and uh, they want to tell me everything I'm doing wrong when I have a red day and stuff like that. But like with the opening range breakout, it's just it's very black and white, right? Like you get in at a certain level, you exit at a certain level. None of it's really subjective. It's all very, very binary. It's all very static, like what you do in the trade. And so, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you get in when it breaks the high or low and you ride it for that one to one target. And so days that it doesn't work is just days that it doesn't work. And those are going to happen for sure. And so one of the things is I just got to handle my emotions a little bit better, but I'm getting better with it, uh, understanding that losses are going to happen. And at this point, I just have to kind of tweak how I'm approaching the strategy a little bit better so I can get that full one to one uh, profit target when it actually does work, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly, man. It's a systematic way to approach it. For sure. Uh, yeah, I'm live every day, Alex. Uh, every weekday, at least. Sorry, Mitch. I had to turn you down a little bit, brother. You got some people yelling in the background, bro. Yeah, what's up, guys? Uh, yes, I am live, AJ. Uh, Mitch, somebody's asking, what was the thought process behind the AMRN short? I'm pretty sure it was just a VWAP fade, right? Classic VWAP fade, bro. Right. Classic VWAP fade. I stick to what works. Um, you know, I've had some trouble with the VWAP fade lately, last couple months. But what I realized is that I have to stick with it because the days that it has worked, it's it's worked pretty well. Um, what I noticed is a lot of times what I was getting is non-continuation moves. So moves towards the first profit target, not moves towards the second profit target. So when times when the VWAP fade is not working. I need to somewhat um, maybe change the way I take profit and maybe do more of a, a two to one trade, but a one in one out method versus taking half profits and trying to get that continuation move. 
You know, sometimes you can't always get the home run move like AMRN right now. You know, everyone would wish they were still in it if they were in where I got in. But the way that I set up the trade, I took out more than what I needed and I got $65 profit for a nice uh, maximum risk. It was about only up to 50, what was it, 58? Yeah. So seven cent risk with 400 shares. That's, we're talking very, very small. We're right. talking about $20, $30 and I made $65. So three to one trade. You gotta know not to be greedy and take it off. Right. So you know, establish your trading plan. For sure. So like if you look at Mitch's trade, right, he got in at seventeen fifty one right here. And his risk, like you said, was at seven fifty eight. Why was that his risk? Is because if you look here, you get all this support and resistance right at that level. Here, 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 and here. And so you have some confirmation in that fifty eight level. And so you have a pretty tight risk, right? And so your risk is this much. And your reward, what was your reward target? Seventeen thirty maybe? First gonna, target was 30s, second yeah. target was 27. So right, so you get this little top box as your risk and your reward targets all the way down there. And so it's just a big risk reward, a uh, good risk reward trade. Tiny risk, big reward. And uh, like Mitch said, a pretty nice VWAP fade there, pretty tight, very obvious self-evident VWAP fade. And so, you know, you get this nice move here. When you're at places that you're not comfortable with trading, you always got to go and stick with what you know is your bread and butter. And BWAP fade is definitely my bread and butter. For sure. I think it's all of I'll ours. Be, I'll be able to pay my coffee today. <laughs> yeah. GE. Yeah, man. GE is right around the VWAP. The only reason I don't like GE as much, I mean, it doesn't look terrible, right? Like if you get in with the VWAP fade here, you could set a risk of about... 1021 or so so your risk is what six cents seven cents and your reward target can yeah. be down to 10 so your risk is seven cents six cents and your reward is 13 14 cents and so you have two to one and so your risk is this your reward is this and so it's reasonable um and risk and reward is relatively subjective and so people are going to set it at different levels but it's just about sticking to it once you give yourself that risk reward and, and really kind of uh allowing it to work for you hi Ann what's up Hamid is AMD a short today uh, I mean it looks weak it, I think it depends on what the spy does <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, I see you over there, bro. <laughs> I see Mitch in the corner of my screen on Skype. What's up, bro? I can't hear you, man. The volume's not working. What's bro. up? There you go. I'm good. Yeah. In the game. You want me to throw you up here? You want me to show you to the yeah. YouTube room? Look, guys, we got go Mitch here. It. What's going on, guys? Hold Trading on. a little bit in the lobby life. You know? Hey, let's see. There you go. <laughs> hey, let's check out that profit. <laughs> we got Mitch here now. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see that? You see yeah. that profit? Yeah, I see it. There you go, guys. That's how we do it. A little laptop trading. Yeah, for sure, man. Oh, are yeah, you in man. a Starbucks? Where are you at? Um, I was I, I was just in it. I just got out. I just uh, too much music there. Yeah, so I went into the lobby, the hotel lobby. Nice. Yep. Here in the Sheraton, downtown Denver. Those are nice, man. Those are nice. And, uh, I'm expecting a bounce here on AMRN. Let's see if it's going to reject at the VWAP. It's going to have a good risk to reward. You're going to have a potential to get in somewhere near... 35 36 and you can risk off of 43 on which one on amrn amrn yeah the spy may be rebounding some here and it's just one of those days where with the opening range breakout on amd amd it would have chopped me out both ways right so even if i would have got in with the gap fill opening range like getting in at the low here it would have faked me out on that side so it was just one of those days where the opening range just didn't work and that's okay but yeah, Mitch is looking fly over there, man. Hey, you know it, man. Ready for my interview later. I'm looking. You don't even know. With the jacket on? 
Ooh. I know, man. Killing it, bro. Killing that it, man. <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, if anybody's interested in using the broker that Mitch and I use, you can check out TradeNet. Their 20% off sale is done, but you can still get 10% off of TradeNet packages by going through my link. And so if you're interested in checking out the broker that Mitch and I use on a daily basis, you can go to my link I just posted in the chat and check them out and get 10% off. It's not a bad deal, really, because you get $700 with the intro package, and it only costs $450 with the link, and so you get an extra $250 to lose, really. So it's not a bad deal, I, I wouldn't say. Not a bad deal at all, man. One of the best things is you're able to trade and short any stock that's tradable, yeah. and you're not going to have to pay shorts. You're not going to have to locate. Um, locating, I think, is really the negative of shorting with any other broker than Tefs here, um, and that's the advantage that you can take, especially if you like shorting. You can go up to any size. Another thing I really like about TEFs that I don't talk about too often is for you traders on the long side, it's really great to get into a trade and not have to worry if they're going to margin restrict the stock. If the stock is tradable, you can grab as many shares as you'd like on TEFs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, the spy. Uh, my internet's starting to cut out a little bit, so I think I'm going to wrap it up for today, guys. I'm going to just take that $65 great trade and celebrate a good, you know, traveling trading day. Yeah, man. Hey, you did it from a coffee shop, bro. So that's extra points, man. That's bonus points, bro. So good job. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm three for three now here in Denver. Hey. Last time I was here, I was two for two and knocking it out the park. Not good vibes. Bad on the travel. Good. Man, I mean, I need to move to Denver then, bro. Good vibes though, brother. Good job, man. Hey, got to, got to. All right, guys, so that's probably going to wrap it up for me. I'm going to go and uh, get ready for my interview. Looking fresh. Got to go uh, refreshing up and go enjoy some breakfast. All uh, right, brother. Glad I was able to be part of the stream. Yeah, man. Looking forward to keep building, man. 10K subscribers, and we're going to keep going. Let's do it, man. All right, guys, everybody have a great day, and I'll see you guys back on Monday. Later, brother. All right, take care. All right, guys. We got Mitch out of here. So yeah, Kron actually looks like a good VWAP bounce. And VWAP bounces have actually been working surprisingly well lately. I don't know. I didn't ask him. I didn't ask him what the job interview was. I hate job interviews. I'm a pretty social dude. I just don't like job interviews. I don't like jobs, you know, believe it or not. I don't like corporate environment. It's just not fun for me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I've had a bunch of jobs, and uh, I found out pretty early on in my mid twenties that I just I would rather work for myself, and so that's what I did, and it worked out, but. It's actually kind of crazy how it all works out, though. Yeah, I mean, it, here's the thing, right? Like, it's not that I don't mind jobs. Like, the reason I actually started, like, I have that Amazon business that pays the bills here. And, like, it's actually weird how it started, right? So, like, I, I mentioned earlier, a few days ago, how, uh, how my wife had a double mastectomy at, like, 23 or 24. She has the BRCA2 gene, the BRC2 gene. Um, for breast cancer and so at 24 my wife had a double mastectomy right and at in that time you know I had kids and so my wife couldn't lift my kids in order to like take care of them because she had that surgery and so I had to quit my job at the time and uh, basically figure out a way to make money from home since my wife you know couldn't lift my kids and I had to be their caretaker after she had that and so I started the Amazon business and it was really like a blessing to me I was able to do that and uh, make more money doing that than I did at my previous job. And so that's kind of how I got started with it. And uh, it ended up working out. So it's actually weird how that worked out. But yeah, corporate environment's just not fun for me. But yeah, we got this VY bounce on Cron. It, it was pretty good risk reward um, with it, at least. I mean, you could do 2050 as your uh, as your risk from about 2082, 2080 maybe. So tight risk there for that one. Uh, no, it wasn't drop shipping. It was uh, 
it was uh, used books, believe it or not. I know a lot of people are doing it now, but like I've been doing it for like five years, and so I've been I've been kind of doing it before everybody else was. And uh, you know, at this point, I have thousands and thousands of books at home, and uh, it makes it kind of easy. It's just a system that I use, but it works. I have a few videos on it. Yeah, I mean, my wife didn't really have cancer. Like, she didn't have cancer. She just had, you know, she had the BRCA2 gene, which is like a super aggressive breast cancer gene, right? And so, like, her chances of getting breast cancer in her uh, in her 20s were extremely high. And so it was just a precautionary mastectomy is what it was. But it's actually even weirder. Like, while she was, uh, you know, with, with the mastectomy, they put in um, expanders. They put in expanders after they do the mastectomy to kind of stretch the skin out. Right. And while she still had the expanders in, she was, she became pregnant with my son at the time. And so she actually had to go through the entire pregnancy with these big expanders, uh, in, and give birth while she still had the expanders in. And then after she gave birth to my son, they had to finish the rest of the surgery. And so it was kind of complicated how it worked. But, uh, like I said, it ended up working out. It was kind of a blessing, you know, Uh, yeah, I'll find it for you, uh, Sid. Here, let me find it for you. Or no, let me find it for you, JJ. Sorry. Here, uh, let me see. I have a few. I have a few. Uh, let me look for it. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, I mean, here's a video kind of walking through what I do, if you want to see it. If you want to see what I do, watch that video. It's an old video about it, posted about a year ago. But yeah, it just kind of shows what I do. TMSR. Yeah, TMSR getting some volume pushing up. Huge move, really, for this one. It's up from like three dollars. It's all the way to seven, so over a hundred percent move on that one. But yeah, AMD now pushing up. It's just going with the overall spy. Spy was a little faky this morning, breaking the lows, pulling right back up to the highs, and so you can see AMD starting to head back up. It's just following the overall spy. There was nothing I can do with it though. Uh, it broke my risk on the uh, downside and then it pushed right back up. So regardless of which way I would have entered AMD today, it would have stopped me out. So it's just kind of one of those things that happens. MBOT spiked up originally at the open, and now it's actually starting to head back down some. Uh, I mean, yeah, I get paid from them, Maurice. CGC pulling back to the VWAP. It may be a VWAP rejection here. It's just about where your risk is and the likelihood of it actually following through. You know, risk in CGC would be, uh, I don't know, maybe 50.09 or so. You get about a uh, 20 cent risk right there. Reward level down to 49.60. So it's good risk reward. Look, exactly right when I say that. Look at that. Perfect example of what I was talking about here. So. If you guys caught this move while I was explaining it, I wasn't able to take advantage of it. But I said my risk level was up here at 50.09, 50.10, and my reward level was at 49.60. And where did this one go? Right when it just pulled back here? 49.60 on the dot. Exactly at 49.60. And so it kind of shows what you do with the VWAP rejection and the VWAP fade. Uh, it would have been a nice trade, but oh well. Missed it, but trade idea was correct. Just uh, was too busy explaining it to actually take the trade. <laughs> but it, it's all right.
would have had to take profits quick, but it did confirm that level. And then Kron with that nice VWAP bounce. Beautiful VWAP bounce here for Kron. Like I said, risk is the only thing that would have been hard to determine here for Kron. I mean, I guess you could use 75 down here. Maybe a little bit too tight, though. I would probably rather do 55 here and then a reward level up at the previous high of the day up here. It'd still give you really good risk reward. G-O-O-S kind of pulling back to the VWAP sum as well. And M-U, nice VWAP bounce here for M-U. <laughs> but yeah, MU looking actually pretty strong today. I wonder what Nvidia did today. Come on, Shopify. Don't come in here posting links, brother. Honestly, I'm surprised you were able to post that link. I'll leave it up just because I've never seen anybody be able to post a link here. And so, uh... <laughs> but come on now, man. No more. Post it again, I'll ban you. So, sorry, bro. But yeah, Spy rebounded here. Heading back up here. I mean, it was a red day for me, but overall market's looking good, and so that's something to take in. TMSR is unhalted. CLDX. Yeah, CLDX is looking good. TMSR still moving up, though. Huge move here. This thing's up 300% on the day. Or not 300 yet, about 250. Hahaha. <laughs> Yeah, CRON is pushing up, man. I, I noticed CRON. It, it was a really nice VWAP bounce here. And like, if you want to know what a VWAP bounce is, it's basically the opposite of a fade. You get a bullish trend, pull back to the VWAP, and then a bounce back up here. And so it followed through really nicely for the bounce, um, bounce move. And so it's about, we'll see if it holds these gains now. CGC is actually underneath the VWAP, and it followed through with that rejection really nicely as well. So maybe today was a better day for fades and rejections as opposed to the opening range. But the opening range breakout on like Kron would have worked well today. Yesterday would have faked out. Day before would have faked out. Yeah, TMSR, really crazy move here. Man, two-way. That would have been a nice trade, bro. Did you hold it? Were you able to get in on it? Nice, Isaac. Congrats, brother. Good job, man. Nice work. <laughs> yeah, who knows, uh, Chris. Isaac, you'll be all right, bro. 
Yeah, I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to go make myself some more coffee. I'll be back in like a minute or two. All right, I'm back. G-O-O-S doesn't look terrible for a fade. Um, we'll see. It just I think it all depends on what the market does, but it doesn't look terrible. Risk could be tight at 51.70 or so. Don't know what the accuracy rate is going to be like, but that's a pretty good risk reward relative to all things considered. LYL, low float. Uh, not enough movement for me. It's a little slow, low volume. But yeah, guys, I'll probably end up closing it down actually right now. Um, probably not going to take another trade. Uh, so probably going to just uh, close it down a little bit. Like I said, if you're interested in using the broker that Mitch and I use, you can check out my link. Uh, the 20% off trade net sale is done, but you can still get 10% uh, off trade net packages by going through my link. And so if, it, if you're interested in using the broker that Mitch and I use on a daily basis, I'll post that link here and you can go check it out. Also, shout out to Trade Ideas. 
uh, trade ideas is cool enough to allow me to stream their scans every morning and so if you're interested in checking out the uh, scanner that Mitch and I use you can check out trade ideas I know they have their winter test drive coming up which allows you to kind of use trade ideas and only pay for like a week I think it's like eight bucks and you can try it out for a week to see if it's something you're interested in using um, and so if you want to check out trade ideas you can check out the link I just posted there as well and uh, if you go through either one of them it does help support the channel so we appreciate any support we can get <clears throat> but yeah red day today like I said got a few things to tweak but I think it was a green week this week and so just gonna keep moving forward with the strategy maybe scale up a little bit in size next week to try to get back to the starting size that I used but uh, yeah good luck for the rest of the day guys uh, if you haven't already click the like button uh, we day trade live on stream every weekday morning, so don't forget to subscribe as well. Appreciate all the new subs, Dennis, Ibrahim, Ben, or Bev, uh, Lou. Appreciate it, guys. Welcome, and uh, we hope you'll join us again on Monday. I should have a few, few videos I put out this weekend, um, and so, yeah, I'll be sure to make those. And, uh, yeah, good luck for the rest of the day, guys. I'll be sure to post a recap video this weekend sometime. Maybe not post my daily recap video after the stream today and maybe just post it tomorrow. Uh, on the weekend so yeah good luck guys i'll see you all to, uh, i'll see you all monday and uh, like i said hit that like button if you want to help support the channel good luck guys we'll see you yeah the patriots hey uh isaac be ready to be called brady for a week next week brother just be ready man that's all i'm saying is just be ready because i'm going to be calling you brady for a week man uh, you need to get used to it a little bit i think So, uh, yeah, good luck, guys. I'll see you all uh, Monday. Have a good day.